It's one of the chilliest days of the national hunt season, but if there's one thing that warms the heart, it's a racehorse trainer with a real passion for the game. And Ilka Gansera Levesque most certainly has that. The only female racehorse trainer who is also a practicing vet has a real zest, not just for racehorses, but for artwork too. Let's find out and let her paint the picture. How did you come to be involved in the sport originally? Well, we were always racing fans. So my family always went racing when I grew up in California. We'd go to Santa Anita every weekend. And even before then in Arizona, my dad was a pilot, so um, a starfighter pilot. So we would always, you know, every three years you had to move. So before that, uh, when I was really little, like kindergarten age, we lived in Arizona. We went to Turf Paradise. Um, so I was always into racing and then got into riding horses and wanted to be an apprentice or wanted to be a jockey so I did a German apprenticeship and then off it goes and then um, later on I decided to go back to vet school <clears throat> when I was 26 so I went back to the vet school of Hanover in Germany. And you ended up here how? We got this place in the summer of 2015 from Bill O'Gorman. We live above the yard and um, we called it St. Wendred's because it is the main well of the Seven Springs. But I can't take credit for that, Bill, because the BHA kept saying, what are you going to call your place? What are you going to call your place? And I was like, oh, my God, Bill, what am I going to do? And then he said, well, if you want to keep it in the water theme, you, sh you could name it after the main well of the Seven Springs, which are right here along the A14. Have you ever thought about exploring your roots back in America or maybe going to train there one day? I want to, um, actually, I'm working on a plan of like having a little satellite string for Saratoga over there. So if anybody's watching, if you want to have a runner over there, get in touch, even with a jumper, <laughs> get in touch. I always enjoy meeting people in life who have got passion for things. And you've certainly got a passion for horses, but you've also got a passion for art. Yeah, I love art. And I think that's what life's all about. Like you got to find your purpose and your passion and the art thing just kind of fell into my lap and I went with it and I, I ran with it and it's growing from strength to strength and it's exciting. It certainly is. And you've got three galleries now, haven't you? All with art that is original. Yeah, three gallery spaces and then the gallery also will be taking part in some well-known art fairs such as affordable art fair and refresh art fair. So it's all like, it's not the knick-knacky, it's really the real deal. It is slightly different than your usual gallery, so. Yeah. Like... Well, what's great about them is that they're situated in horse boxes themselves, which is very unusual. Yeah, one of them we had like as a storage box and one of the boxes we turned into an owner's room and I was like, get the coffee machine out, let's hang some art. Fantastic stuff. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go and have a look at some of those pieces. So our stable star of the gallery is Anna Pugh. She's one of Britain's leading folk artists and she has this storytelling style because every little blade of grass, every insect is so much in there. And Elizabeth Castell too, who is seen in the v &A, and she's also got that piece there, hasn't she? Yeah, they both live in a village in, in Sussex and Elizabeth Castell is a textile designer by trade. It's, it's great to be working with octogenarians and it's through Anna Pugh's name here that I got all these other um, international artists to take part, I think. Yeah, and I guess if an artist like Anna Pugh has that reputation, then more people are going to want to send paintings to you yeah, as a result. Yeah, that's kind of how it all snowballed, but they also all said, oh, we love that it's in a, in a stable and we love that it's kind of different. Because I was like, I don't have an art degree, you know, that I just kind of say I like this and I'm doing it. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. And I run with it. And I suppose one of the... The big drawers in this room is the, the wonderful eyes staring down at us here. Some sight they are. Yeah, that's Benedict Gillet from France. <clears throat> and she was here with me. Um, she was here for the original or the, the inaugural exhibition. And then she's the one that said, Ilka, I don't have a gallery that represents me in the UK. Can I leave my bigger pieces with you? And I was like, sure, man, let's go for it. She does a lot of this emotional, like it really draws you in and appeals to non-horse people as well, funnily enough. You know, uh, a lot of people go, wow. This yeah, is... as you would, seeing that, to be honest. Uh, and I also wanted to mention that, obviously, one of your stable stars is Miss Bella Brand. Yes. And there's a, a lovely little portrait of her, which I have to say looks really rather lovely here, and that's by Jackie Hardman. Yeah, Jackie Hardman from Beverly. I had her paint a few of them. I said, I'll paint some of Miss Bella Brand. I'm sure her owners will buy one. And then 
<laughs> Miss Bella Brand actually has a fan in Australia. It's really, it's really funny. She watches her run every time, always bets on her. So she even bought a painting that went to Australia of Miss Bella Brand. You've got many strings to your bow. You're a racehorse trainer, an art curator, and of course, you're also a vet. I imagine that having that third string to your bow is very helpful in terms of looking after racehorses on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, it's helpful with the bigger picture. Nothing replaces horsemanship. Like, horsemanship is the most important thing. Um, you have the bigger picture, you pick up things earlier. But um, at the end of the day, like training racehorses, they're professional athletes and the, the line between fit and broken is like very close. So you're always like playing with that, you know, like trying to get them spot on for the race. And like, if you do sports yourself, you know what it's like, like you, you train for a race, you got setbacks, all these things. So it comes in handy also at ex for explaining scenarios to owners and yeah, and like keeping on top of things, the day-to-day -day stuff. I think people feel like the owners feel, um, it gives them a good feeling, I guess. Yeah, I'm sure. And do you find that your vet instincts help you perhaps to spot things a little bit earlier than others might not spot or see a way of improving a horse's health in the way that others might not? Yeah, I always try to think outside the box, but it is a little bit like a good rider can feel things before you can see them. So sometimes like you, you're you like, oh, this is, let's scan sixth this. Sixth sense. Yeah, yeah, it is like a sixth sense. And then that's that's kind of what happens then. And then you're like, oh, here we go. Because, yeah, when I'm like, okay, we got to scan this, and everybody's like, there's nothing there. And then I was like, yeah, there's something there. And if you had any ambitions, aims, or targets for Gansera Levesque racing over the next few years, what would those be? Uh, get the numbers up. I want this whole, we have some empty stables. I want to get it full. With jumpers, flat horse, it doesn't matter. Because like, you're dual purpose, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I'm dual purpose. That was also by accident, more or less. I mean, I have a show jumping background, and so does my husband, Stefan, but uh, we had a horse that didn't want to, come out of the stall like she'd load fine but she wouldn't come out so i said oh i'm gonna like see if i can't trick you a little bit so we started swimming and jumping her only in the mornings and then i said man she really enjoys this let's take her over some hurdles and then i was like okay which jockey we're we gonna get and then i had a we had a great working relationship nick schofield and i and she was like a worcester specialist so I, he always keeps saying you got to get more jumpers back in so we can do some a project again together so yeah we'll see